Yes, sir. With with you guys, um, so let me say, let me put it like this: you guys come from two different backgrounds, right? Like, you know, like, yeah, you're you're black, of course. You, <laughs> what is what is your partner? My wife is actually Laotian, so she's from Laos. Like, there's a lot of things in her culture that's completely on the opposite spectrum of the way I grew up. So yes, completely different. So with, with raising the kid, um, how does that, how does the different backgrounds play into raising the kid? And I'll get into roles soon, but that's not, I just want to find out like, as, as far as like the traditional side, are you guys look more to traditional, are you guys off kilter, like you guys kind of figure it out with this new age parenting, like what, where do you guys lie and how does the cultures, different cultures play into like the raising of the kid? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's kind of a mix, I guess, depending on, like, although our culture is kind of uh, opposite end spectrum, what we want out of life and kind of what we want as parents is kind of similar. Hey, what up, everybody? This is Jayton Gunter, owner of Grapes and Sam Publishing, and we have another episode of Drinking with Dads. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is a show where I give fathers their flowers. Hey, what up, everybody? Jayton Gunter here, owner of Grapes and Sam Publishing. Welcome to another episode of Drinking with Dads. I have an amazing dad here, but I'm going to get into him in a second. I just want to let you guys know the premise of this whole discussion. I am a new father, and I am trying to absorb as much knowledge as I can about being a better father. So what I'm doing is I am setting up this platform where I can give fathers who I know have been amazing fathers their flowers, because they deserve it. A lot of times when it comes to the rearing of kids, we look to mothers mostly, but we do more than just provide and protect. And I want to kind of highlight those things that we do specifically in our community, but also as fathers in general, like we are all overlooked. And so I want to kind of give them their flowers and also pick their brain about how to be a better father myself since I'm new to the game. Um, and with that being said, I have an amazing one right here, my boy, Mike Jocks. Um, we're about 20, 20, 20 some years in, we've been rocking for a long time. 99, bro. 99. 99, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is my boy. This is my party guy. We were back in the day. We got some stuff we can't tell y'all. Yes. In the closet we can't talk about. But being honest, this has been my road dog for a long time. Oh, man. Forever, <laughs> man. Forever. You know, and it's, it's just real positive when you can, you can, we can go off in the world, we can do our own little things. But then when we come back together, it's just like it's the next day after the last time I seen you. You know for what I'm sure. saying? So, it never changes you, with us, bro. Yeah, for you real, man. Mission, bro. For real. It's a real brotherhood, man. It's a real brotherhood. And and, and our community can use that, you know, instead yeah. of fighting each other and, and, and everything has to be negative and mad dog and invited. Yeah. We need more love, man. We need more of this, you know, just catching up with your brother, talking about your brother, enlightening yeah. people and getting better and being a father. You know, that's crucial, man. It's real. And the thing is, the thing I appreciate about you doing this is because, like, even like us, again, we have our own lives now. Like, you're in Vegas now. I'm out here in California, so we don't see each other all the time. And it's cool. I just sent out the bat signal to you, and you were like, without a question, like, yo, I got you. You know, it's going to be a hell of a, a podcast with me and you on there, but, you know, I got you. <laughs> so I appreciate Mike Jocks is out here, Good, like, to be killing here. the father game, man, for real. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so with that being said, um, you're in Vegas right now. Uh, were you able to find some – because we're doing red wine, guys, if you guys can't see – I got somebody who's actually going to drink some alcohol alcohol with me on camera. <laughs> you know right. I am about wine. He has a nice Argentinian blend, uh, uh, Malbec Heavy. And I'm dealing with the Desert Wind out of Washington State, Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, and it's 2018. And I love this wine. Um, I'm really big on uh, Washington State wines because they have a lot of the boldness that you would get from like Napa and Sonoma, but you get at a better price sometimes depending on what you're looking for. And it also it has a nice balanced tan like it's Bordeaux. So I dig it quite a bit. Um, but my so first you question for that, you prefer huh? that over the, oh, you prefer that over the, the, not the Napa, but like the central Californians, like the, the Paso Robles, you prefer that, that, that Washington. Kind of oh yeah. If I'm talking about Bordeaux grapes, Specifically, mm -hmm. the ones being like uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot. Of course, there's Petit Verdot and uh, and what else? And Malbec are like the five main ones that they talk about. Uh, I'm talking about those grapes specifically. I do like Washington State a little bit better for my price point. Now, if you're talking about the higher end stuff, then that's yeah. Napa Sonoma all day, and I can't even the, even their high end stuff is really good, but uh, like Washington State is, but it doesn't for me. I've had 
they've had that band and Sonoma have the best high end wines you can get okay. from Portland varietals in all of California. Uh, and all of like uh, I would say anything in the United States, they they, they, make, they make the best. Uh, okay. But Washington State makes outstanding wines. So they do, they really okay. do. So I didn't know that high, high up on the on the level. I thought they were for peasants. Okay, when uh, I see you it, I know it's real. <laughs> you know how much I drink wine. Shit. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. The endorsement, then it's good. You know. <laughs> so let so let me get around to my first question with you. Uh, all right. What? is the last gift you got for Father's Day? Or maybe the most yes. important. It doesn't have to be the it doesn't have to be the last one, the one that sticks out to you. Sticks out. Okay. I'm glad you said that because that gives me a different answer. Uh the one that sticks out to me is my first one. You know, my son was born, he's seven now. Uh he was born in March and Father's Day is a couple months after that. So he wasn't even old enough. He doesn't remember any of this. But what my wife did was back in those days I was really high on craft beers. Like I was a uh you know, every day we going to some different brewery, trying out something, getting a bunch of samples and then bringing it home and then putting it in the growler and then drinking it and then watching football or something, you know? So I was big into craft beers, but what she did was she woke me up and she told me to get in the car. And I was like, okay, you know, where are we going? She's like, just get in the car. And at this time I was in, uh, in the Navy and stationed down in San Diego. You know, San Diego has a pretty hardcore uh, craft beer scene. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So um, she took me in the car and uh, little did I know we were going to each craft beer, uh, location between Pacific Beach, Ocean Beach, uh, Point Loma. We were all over uh, San Diego just hitting different breweries with our kids. And what was neat is, you know, some kids or some breweries were saying, you can't come in with the stroller. Some breweries were uh, were looking at us kind of funny, like you're bringing your kid in here. And then some were like, oh, cool, you got a stroller, bring it in. But why I say it's my favorite is because, you know, when I'm sitting here and I'm ringing with my son now, I can flip through those pictures in my phone when we have time, and I can just reminisce and what it was mostly about, it wasn't about prices and, and being an expensive gift. It was about a memory that would last a lifetime. Like your first few days, bro, you was you was rolling with dad, doing something, one of his hobbies that he had back then. And it was just a, it's just price, it's a priceless moment that just sticks with me when we talk about the theme of fatherhood. So that's the one that came to mind when you asked that question, man. I love that. I love that. Did you always want kids? Was this something that you had in the back of your mind? I mean, back in the day, I don't know if we was ever talking about. I mean, we did, but like you know. We was we was talking about other stuff. <laughs> yeah, we wasn't talking about kids, bro. Well, I'll tell you that much. Uh, you know, for me, that's another good question. For me, um, it was kind of more about, I mean, every guy kind of wants to lead their legacy, you know, and, and, and be able to keep their seat going. That wasn't really my thing. My thing was more so getting, finding a life partner. And then if, if it was something that was going to help them fulfill what they wanted in life, then I was down for the kid. You know, now I'm not down for six and seven. And that's just not my vibe. But, yeah. you know, I was down to have one or two um, as long as they wouldn't, if we would be able to reach our goals as a family and we would be able to kind of build together and I would have the time to be able to be a proper father. Because I think that's important. Uh, that's which is one of the reasons why I got out of the Navy. Actually, I was doing well in the Navy and actually enjoyed it. But mm -hmm. I felt like being out to sea for seven to nine months at a time wasn't really conducive to what I was trying to do as a father. Yeah. You know, I, call, I go out to see, I come home, he's growing up, he's growing up, he's growing up. By the time I keep coming back, he's going to say, hey, man, this ain't your house. You know, I ain't missing yeah. anything. And I can't even blame him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's important for me to, it was more important at the time for me to find the right partner. And if they wanted kids, then I'm cool with kids, you know? And that's just kind of how we roll with my wife. It's so funny you say that because that was actually one of the things with me and EJ. You know, we've been together for 16 years. Um, I, as of la as of this month, man, sixteen years, yeah. And oh. initially, we didn't know, we didn't have that conversation about kids. We just got together, right? But then I come to find out. First of all, I never, I've been kind of indifferent to the whole thing of having kids. Always have been. Yeah, you have. Yeah, you have. And so, and so, like she, I asked her point blank one. I think it was like her second, third year, maybe. She came out. She didn't even. I'd ask her actually. She came out and said, "How would you feel if we never had kids?" And I was just, I was shocked. I was like, "Oh wow." Um, I don't know how I'd feel about it. I mean, I, I always thought maybe I'd have kids, but you know. And then I grew. The more we grew into the relationship, I really started realizing like, I don't care either way. It's not like I'm not going to force this because society tells me I got to do it. And also, I'm not going to do it for legacy. That feels selfish to me. So I was like, I'm not going to do that. So I said, you know, if you decide you want to have kids, the next day we can do it. But for me, I'm cool either way. I'm happy that I, we have a we're a partnership. I love you. Whatever, whatever we do, we do it together. And if that's not something that you think is in the cards, that's fine. Now we got we we rocked on for a good sixteen years without having, 
you know, any issues, you know. Well, I, 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 I you that one up. Hey man, I'm, 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 I'm gonna tell you offline. I'm gonna tell you how offline how great I am at certain things, but I can't. I'm not gonna say it online because it sounds crass. But yeah, <laughs> but no, You're pretty good, real. huh? Pretty good. <laughs> and, and, and you know we can. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Even, I was about to say something crazy, <laughs> but you always bring it out of me because you. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna come. <laughs> Stay tuned. Drinking with Dads will be right back. I just released a new show called Drinking With Dads and this is a platform where I give fathers their flowers. I have some merch to back that up. So if you have a wonderful father in your life or you're looking for some cool father gear for yourself, go to my online store, fruitandglassgear.etsy.com and check out what we got there. Cheers. Now back to the show. That's crazy. No, I would not. We, 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 uh... We, when we finally decided when she got pregnant and we found, and we're 40, we're in our 40s, by the way, guys, like we're, we've been rocking for a long time, but we're in our 40s, so I didn't think anything was coming. Mm. So when we finally did, I was like, all right, well, we're here now. What do you think? And she's like, all right, let's do it. I was like, all right, we're going to do it. So it's been a ride, you know, thus far. I'm learning. I learned a lot about myself so far. I've learned a lot about her yeah. and the kid uh, now that he's here. So it's been interesting. With you guys, so were you afraid? I don't know. Were you afraid? I gotta ask that as a man. Were of you afraid? Course. Of course, I was afraid. I was sitting here like, "What is going on?" Like, yeah, a lot of times men hide that, and don't want to show that. That you know, but it's good for men to say, "Yeah, I was afraid." You know, Dude, I didn't want to. I didn't want to show her fear because I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. When we first found out, the day that we found out, she was she was distraught. You know what I mean? Because she never wanted kids. So the day she found out, that was a rough night. And so I had to be the supportive person. I had to be like, I'm here for whatever. You know what I mean? Now a month later, you know, we 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 got to got it together, you know. But for that first, I would say first night, first month, it was there's a lot of uh conversations, a lot of like, you know, uh emotions behind things and yes. just uh, trying to figure it out, you know. So that was big. Um yes, sir. With, with you guys, um so let me say, let me put it like this. You guys come from two different backgrounds, right? Like, you know, yeah, you're you're black, of course. You, you know. <laughs> what is what is your partner? You know, what is your what is your partner? My wife is actually Laotian, so she's from Laos. Okay, so she was she was actually in Thailand, but her family is all Laotian, full Laotian. So okay. they're kind of like uh, cousins, brothers, sisters with Thai people, but they okay. have their own language and they're riding out in the Pacific Ocean. But yeah, she's Laotian. Hundred percent Laotian. So How her, had, parents, her parents were. Her parents were what? Her parents were born in Laos, born and raised in Laos. Went to oh, a concentration camp, got moved to Thailand. She was born in Thailand, and then they moved here when you know she was really, really of a young age, and uh, moved to Seattle. And then they ended up in the Central Valley on Southern Fresno. So she's kind of more Americanized because she's got some different. You know, she she's grown up here. You know, so she's really, really Americanized. But her traditions and her cultures are very, 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 very rooted in tradition and culture and uh, very conservative, very okay. conservative. That, like they have a dowry if you want to get married, you know, yeah, you're supposed to go, you know, sacrifice certain animals before you have a kid. Like there's a lot of things in her culture that's completely on the opposite spectrum of the way I grew up. So, yes, completely different. So when, with raising the kid. um how does that, how does the different backgrounds play into raising the kid? And I'll get into roles soon, but that's not, I just want to find out like, as far as, far as like the traditional side, are you guys like more to traditional, are you guys off kilter, like you guys trying to figure it out with this new age parenting, like what, where do you guys lie and how does the cultures, different cultures play into like the raising of the kid? Yeah, I think it's, um, it's kind of a mix, I guess, depending on, like, although our culture is kind of uh, opposite end spectrum, what we want out of life and kind of what we want as parents is kind of similar. So that makes right. it easier. So um, the way we kind of raise him is more Americanized, of course, but in order to kind of fulfill his, his, his grandparents and his great grandparents and, you know, fulfill what they want out of their culture, mm -hmm. like he has to get baptized, you know, on my side, then he has to go on her side and he has to, you know, get hit in the head with holy water and do, do the mm -hmm. thing and the, you know, Satu and Satu on her side. So we make sure we check all, try to check all those wick wickets of, the traditional cultures of both sides. And then I think the most important thing is communication before we decide what we're going to do with them. 
You know, when we're laying in bed at night, we might say, all right, tomorrow, you know, he's got this. How do you want to handle it? Mm -hmm. And then we talk through. She might feel a certain way. I might feel a certain way. But by the time we go to sleep and wake up, we're all on the same accord. And then when we wake him up, that's just kind of how we, we, we carry forward, march forward with it. So it's a lot of communication and a lot of just trying to make sure we touch the important parts of each of our, uh, of each of our cultures to make everybody happy. And, 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 and it's confusing for him because those are completely different religions as well. Yeah. You know, she's, Buddhist, yeah. she's Buddhist, we're Christian, a lot of different beliefs. And, you know, I encourage him to, see, you know, ask questions. You yeah. know, what you believe in, you got to find what you really truly want to follow. Ask questions on both sides and see what you like. And then, you know, move forward in your life with that, you know? And that's kind of where he's at at seven, you know? So we're, we're, we're figuring that out together. I love that. I love that. That so you saying that is interesting to me because I um that's one thing I've been having conversations with people that are deeply religious. I've had conversations with fathers that are deeply religious okay. and trying to figure out like you know where their religion uh, stops and raising their kids starts and mm -hmm. not having them be on one side of the, one side or the other side, but like letting them find out their own identity, which is dope to me. Because I know one guy I talked to, he's like very Muslim, like he's very Muslim, but he said with his daughter. He's all, I don't eat pork at all. He's all, but I don't keep her from eating pork. If she wants to eat pork, mm -hmm. and my, like her wife, his wife wants, he's all, I let them rock. And he's all, I just do this thing where I just won't kiss him uh, in the mouth for like a whole day. I'll hug them, mm -hmm. kiss them, whatever, but because my religion, I try to, yeah, I find out way, I find ways that I, you know, support them, but also, and yeah. I don't say you know, all this stuff when they're eating pork and stuff. It's just, it's, I want her to find her own identities. I don't want her to be a yes a yes man or you know what I mean so that was interesting to me you saying that I, I I respect that from a lot of these a lot of us fathers now because we were hit over the head with stuff we were coming yeah up. yeah we didn't have a choice bro yeah, <laughs> not, we didn't choice. not at all and you might and you might not end up having resentment from your kid if you don't ever give them a choice you know yeah. like lucky kind of we love our parents we we followed instructions because we didn't have a choice these yeah. kids nowadays a little bit different as far as you know they will they disrespect their parents left and right nowadays, you know? Yeah. So it's a different, you have to have a different level of parenthood. You have to have a di different level of patience, not more yeah. or less patience, but they're in a different society, man. These are COVID kids. These are kids yeah. that are, are, are yeah. attached to their families. These yeah. are kids that they don't write cursive anymore. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They It's a different lifestyle, man. So you have to, you can't say, man, you're doing it my way, write cursive. No, you have to adjust to their lifestyle, man. If you want their respect and if you want that relationship, that father and son relationship to continue. Yeah, I agree. And well, I'll get into that later because I, I, I'm a big proponent of teaching them what you want to teach them outside of the school system and what they're learning. Like, I'm I, the Black History thing. They go, my kid is gonna be on point with the black. Like, I was learn, I was taught that, and I know school is like whatever it is, but they gonna learn about the history because I don't want them. My kid is Filipino and black. I don't yeah. want him to be, I want him to be both sides. I want him to reflect both sides of his culture. And I don't want one to be more dominant than the other. I want him to feel both sides because there's so rich, there's so much richness in both sides of the culture. Mm -hmm. So I want him to feel both of them. Um, yeah. In the early days, when you were guys were, you know, once you found out she was pregnant, you guys were, you guys knew you were going to have this kid. Um, were you guys mentally prepared for this? Were you like financially prepared for this? Were you like, I know exactly what's going to happen, and I already have a plan for this attack. Or were you just like, yo, this is crazy. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, there's Man. like pitfalls everywhere. Stay tuned. Drinking with Dad will be right back. I'm the author of The Man Book. The Man Book was created so that every man has a chance to become great. If you look at the stats, men that grew up without a father have a harder chance trying to become great because of their father's choices and their father's father's choices. The Man Book is here to break that cycle so that every man has that chance. The Man Book, helping boy become man with something as simple as tying a tie. Also being a father, fashion, how to love. This is a book that you need on your shelf. It will help you and it will help people that you love. Get it by going to dreamteamantioch.org. Cheers. Now back to the show. <laughs> Man, I'll, tell, I'll tell you like this, Mike Tyson, you know, he said, everybody got a plan so they get so punched in the mouth. Yeah. You know, that's how parenthood was for me, man. You know, we are super planners. You know, we like to plan everything we can, everything. So we plan this, put this amount of money here for diapers, put this amount of money here for vacation, put this amount of here for daycare. We're going to have daycare three times a week. You know, we planned it all completely, right? And then that thing came out and it was just like a, 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 trying to drink water out of, of a fire hydrant, man. 
You know, and there's I, I read books. I went to Navy courses. I, I don't have any <laughs> brothers or sisters, so I didn't get a chance to practice wrapping diapers, swaddling, putting blankets, watching for SIDS, none of that yeah. stuff. You know, so it was like ready, set, action. And as yeah. much as we tried to plan for it, we couldn't. But you asked me if I would do it all over again or would I like to be more prepared? I'd probably say I'd do it all over again because it taught me, it made me learn things. It made me not, I, hey, that only child spoil shit you, you did for their whole life is over, bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, that's done. You have a whole other life that you got to worry about now. If yeah. I would have been prepared, I would have still been able to be spoiled, stubborn, all those kind of things that I kind of had before the kid. I would have still had those things. So it forced those things out of me in order to be a better father. I'm thankful for that, you know, in the end. But no, we were not prepared. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like you become a better, like just so much a better person after this because you have, you're looking in the mirror, bro. And especially, I'm not, no, no, no diss to people who have daughters because that's, I get, that's a different thing. If you have a son, bro, you're looking in the mirror. And all the little stuff that you were insecure about, you had issues about that you, or, or you thought you had a handle on. You see it in your kid, and you're, you're, and this is early. I'm six months in, and I'm looking at him like he's doing certain things. I'm like, bro, that little, that little That's me. quick temper, <laughs> that little quick temper that you have, bro. We need to, we need to calm that now. That anger, that extreme, like nothing stopping me, anger thing. We need to stop that right now because I don't need you going out like I used to go out. Like you know what I mean? Like yep. I need you to be better than I. And so it forces you to look. You know, like you know how I used to be. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> I mean, you were part of a couple of them. <laughs> so it's Go like with that being said, it's like I, I want to make sure that he's better than I am. I was at that age um, and getting older. I want him to be a better person. So it does force me to look at myself and like really monitor what I'm saying out loud, That's my true. temperament. You know, um, I don't know if this is something that he's getting from me immediately as he's come out or is it something that's just in him? Because mm -hmm. being honest, the temper are on both sides of the family. Oh, and, okay. <laughs> and then on top of that, in the guys in my family, on my side, we are like we we go there if we need to. So it's like, yeah, it's I'm worried about that. There's some things that I'm worried about. That's one of the things that I'm worried about. Yeah. Um, let's okay. talk about roles. Okay. Um, so I know in relationships, sometimes one is like the nurturer and one is like the um, the person that disciplines. Or in certain relationships, you have one person, you have both people doing both things. What is it like with you guys? Are you guys both kind of doing that? Or is it like, I'm the fun dad? Or are like, nah, we, what needs to be shut down, I shut this down? I think we kind of have more, more not 100%, but more of a traditional household where, you know, I'll do more of the discipline because I, you know, she is a social worker by trade. So she has mm -hmm. a really, really, really soft, and a CPS social worker at that. So she mm -hmm. has a really, really, really soft heart for kids. So. Mm -hmm. If he needs to be disciplined, it's a little bit harder for her to discipline him. And being honest, it's 100% harder for him to take her as serious. He still takes her serious, but as serious. Yeah. Because the way she's going to come at him is still going to be in a nurturing kind of format. You know, yeah. when I'm coming in, like, you know, when I'm coming in and my glasses is off, he's going he gonna to know, oh, shit, it's time to really get serious. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. in order, because we saw the, the we saw that it was affecting him more positively with me kind of taking the lead in that, as far as the discipline, I kind of take the lead in The nurturing is reversed. You know, I came from a single mom. I don't really show my emotion too much. Even with my wife, you know, I don't really show my emotion too much. So when, the, when the, yeah, you know, when the kid needs that that nurturing and that extra love and he's had a tough day, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll shoot the social work at him. And that's usually, and then I'll come in and wrap it up, you know, like a bowl. So it's the balance. I like yeah, that. I like that. That's how it works, you know. When when you got when you guys decide you guys are gonna have this kid or whatever, or when when the kid was thrust on you, like you guys were like, oh damn, she's pregnant. Uh, <laughs> do you feel like you got all that partying out of your system before that, or was it like did you like shut everything down prior, or do you still every once in a while go out and have some fun uh, with your wife and like you guys still party every once in a while? Because yeah. I know that it's kind of two different two different camps. Like some people are like, yeah, well, mostly most guys are like. Yeah, I shut it down. Unless she wants to go out, I ain't going out. I'm we chilling. You know what I mean? But then yeah. there's other girls like, no, nah, she knows me. We good. I'm a young father. I'm out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm curious. I think our definition of, of having fun changed when we had a kid. Like when we were single, it our, our definition of fun was, you know, going traveling somewhere or, you know, going out late or drinking at the house until we pass out and doing yeah. it again the next day. I think we still have fun, but it's a different definition of fun. And usually 99% of the time, 
Uh, my mom just recently moved down here, so she's out here to help us out. Well, let's go. Yeah, but before that, we didn't have anybody out in Vegas, so it was like, and we didn't just trust anybody with our kid. So, which ninety nine percent of this time, if and all, all our fun involved the three of us, not just me and her. There would be mm-hmm. times, anniversaries, you know, Valentine's Day, where we can get a babysitter or, or one of our friends will watch, and it'd be cool to get out for a couple of hours. But as far as having fun, once he was born, the fun kind of changed to family fun more so. You know, it was it was vacations, it was you know going to the ocean. We, we still find a way to get our get our having fun and, and releasing, but it was just it just changed the the perspective of fun change. I would say. I love that. Yeah. So tell me one thing about your son that. Uh, whether it's about his his personality or he's really good at sports or something that about your son that really makes you, that's unique to him that really makes you proud of him like something that even even if it's just like school he's really smart whatever it is just let me know something that you are that you look at him and you're like I am so proud of this kid and what he who he's becoming whatever that's it is a, that's a good question my brother um, because I need to do better in that in that area of showing him. I, I, I intently don't show him that I'm proud of him as much as I should because I intently don't want him to be happy and settled with life. And, gotcha. I, and I feel like, you know, if I tell you good job, good job, good job all the time, good job, good job, that's good, that's good. You're going to yeah. think that that's the level you can be at and you're not, you're not going to push for it. Yeah. yeah. But I, on the flip side of that, he needs to know when I'm proud. You know, like, you know, a father is or a son is always going to look for their father's approval. That's just of course. That's, territory you know so I, I have to do a better job of, of being proud because I'm, I'm, I'm proud of him for a lot of things I mean the guy gets straight A's he, he's on a hockey team he's on two hockey teams a hockey travel team which is you know the best travel hockey players in, in the state of Nevada go and play the other best travel hockey players for a full season in other states he made that That's team um, he's a good yeah he's a good productive citizen in class um, he's yes sir, no ma'am type of kid. Like I'm very proud. It's hard for me to narrow down one thing because I'm very proud of him for a lot of things, you know. Yeah. So that would be hard to trigger down to just one. But yeah. I gotta be better. I gotta be better at letting him know that. And and your question kind of put that spotlight on that. That I gotta do that better. I will do that better moving forward. Not That's that a be you're a sports guy. Those things, yeah. Well, you're a sports guy. You always have been. Like since I've known you, uh-huh. you're a Huskies fan. Like you know, you you are a sports guy. So I understand the competitive nature, the edge on you with that. Like with your son, you're like, I want you to like it. And my dad had a problem, like not a hard problem, but he didn't. I knew he loved me and I knew he like loved what I was doing. But he definitely I'd get in that car sometimes thinking I, you know, I did well. And he'd be like, so you messed up on this. You didn't do this. And you know what I mean? That's me. I don't think my brother was telling me he's better about it now because he's a hardcore parent, like, like hardcore father. His son is. One of the best point guards for his age group in the state. Like he's and this kid, put it this way, his son just learned how to play basketball a year and a half ago. What? And from that point on, from once he got into it, he they have a court in the back. He plays every single night. He's on the track. He's on the AAU team that his father put together for kids who can't afford to be on the AAU teams oh, that are amazing for us. Oh, that's no. So Jareem just did that, and like he's been killed. Like the number he was telling me uh, yesterday when I interviewed him, that the number uh, eighteen point guard in the in the uh, in the states uh, for the age was playing against uh, Josiah, which is his son, and he killed him. He yep. said he scored he scored five <laughs> points. The kid like scored immediately five points on Josiah. My brother called uh, the coach called a timeout. My brother's one assistant coach, and he pulled Josiah aside. He said. So you're gonna let this happen? He's like, you're you're a better player than this. I know you are. Mm-hmm. You know, he locked that kid up. He had, <laughs> he had nothing over that five points for the rest of the game. And my brother got video. Of, he was lighting him. That's a little kid. Uh, and I was like so proud. And I was like, so what did you say after the game? He's like, something, something I've been working on is when I'm proud of him, tell him I'm proud of him yeah. because he's hardcore like you. But he but he's he's learning. He's trying to adjust better because he's like, I don't want him to only get the negative. When he yeah. interacts with me, I don't want to have to him behind me taking him down. I yeah. can tell him after I've told him the good stuff that you need to be better about this, and I need you to listen to me. This, I, but yes, you need to tell him the positive first, and then get into the negative. But not negative, but like things he could work on. You know, going yeah. forward. Yeah, and, and those, things, those things are just as important as the positive. Yeah, I, I I need to tell you what you need to work on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't stop doing that. If, if you you say you, we're going to get to this level. 
we got to push. You know what I'm saying? So those things are important. But yeah. I think what really helped me is he, he said that it will probably help if you just when we get in the car, just you know, let's just not talk about the game until we get home. So now That's those car too. rides are kind of yeah, they're more positive car rides, and they're, we talk about anything else, video games, school, whatever. We don't talk about the game. And then after he comes home, he takes a shower, he comes up top, he sits on the couch, and then he goes, "All right, Dad, go ahead." And then that's what I, you know, do my thing. This is really cool that you're bringing this up. Before I even get into the next question, I'm curious about something, or not curious. I want to let you know what my father told me, and it's the same way he used to he used to do with uh, whoopings. Like back in the day when we used to they used to uh, tear us up. My dad used to do this thing where he would never uh, whoop us out of anger. Oh, and so when you're emotionally charged, maybe. When, when he's in the car, that's a good idea of not saying anything about the game because you're emotionally charged. You just got done watching the game. You have all yeah. these notes. For him. Maybe write them down and don't talk about it until you get home. You're not emotionally charged. You can be ejected, and then you yeah. can have a conversation with yeah. him. You know what I mean? Because my, yeah. father, my father used to wait. I mean, it was kind of a mental game with him, too, because he used to wait. play. <laughs> he was sitting there scared the whole time. Like, it's hard you know, for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then, and then he come in so calm and stuff like that. Yeah. So this is what you need to learn. <laughs> you like, dang, man, why don't you keep, can't you just get the whooping over with? I don't want to hear all your words. You know yeah. what I mean? A whole different generation, bro. <laughs> yes. So speaking of that, right? So with the way you are, you tell me that you're all about the family and like every your time is family time nowadays. Ninety nine percent. Yes. For yourself, what is one thing that you do for your own personal like? Make you put a smile on your face, something that's your own, that's just for you. It does not involve your partner that you do for yourself. Um, I don't know, it doesn't matter when you do it, but it's something that you really enjoy it's just for yourself. Is there anything that you do that's like that? Stay tuned. Drinking with Dads will be right back. The Dream Team are a manhood development program that plays basketball. Their focus is getting the boys to be better individuals and leaders in the community while making them excellent basketball players. While most AAU programs cost over $5,000 a year, they are free for families and provide uniforms, warm-ups, shoes, and educational learning events. So they need money. To donate or hear more about the program, go to www.dreamteamantioch.org. Cheers. Now back to the show. Yeah, I think, you know, living out in Vegas is a luxury um, because I'm able to go to a sports book. You know, like you said earlier, sports is like that. My son's name is Espen, ESPN. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So sports, like sports is, is everything to me. You know, like family and sports are together. You know? So uh, being out in Vegas, there's sports books everywhere where you can go sit down, you can make your bets, place a bet, yeah. and you can watch all the games. On the games yeah. I love um, that too. You can see every game. You know, and I love, I got an 85 inch screen at home, and I love watching <laughs> it at home, but you can get all the games at the same time at a sports book. But it takes up a full day. And, sure you does. know, I don't, I don't really have a full day ever. You know, my wife yeah. works opposite shift to me, you know, so, you know, one's working, one's taking care of him. So I don't ever really have a full day. So, when I need my time, I let her know, and somehow we work it out in the schedule. Whether she calls me in, whether she takes the days off, whether she has them at home, she allows me to go to the sports book, watch the full game, full day of the game. I come home rejuvenated. I'm away from father for a while, still yeah. checking in with them, but I'm of away course. from them. looking at the videos and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can decompress. I can come back home, and then I can just, uh, you know, assume my position as father and husband. So that that help that luxury living here that actually helps me there. Actually, yeah, for sure. I love that. For me, uh, so for a long time, I was, uh, for the first, not a long time, but for the first few months, um, I'm the day in, I'm, I, and I still am. I'm the, I'm staying at, I'm the stay-at-home father right now. Like, I'm working from home with my businesses and stuff like that. But, like, I'm the one who's with him day to day. Her mom comes and helps a lot, thank God for her. Uh, my mom comes through once a week and helps out, too, with uh, with her with my dad. Um, but I'm the day to day. So yeah. I was, I think she was, my lady was noticing that I was just like, I was getting burnt yeah. out. You know me, I enjoy my time. I've yeah. always been, even yeah. before me and her got from together. Day one. <laughs> yeah, from day one, even before me and her got together, it was never like I got with her because um, I was lonely. Yeah. I've always been good by myself, you know what I mean? And so when we got together, it was just one of those things that she enjoys her independence and I enjoy my independence. But with the kid, that's gotten thrown out the window. So what she started doing, she said, 
Fridays, when I get home from work, is your day. If you is your night. So what I've been doing, because there's nothing else to do in this area in Fremont, is I've been going to this place called Aloni Cigars. And I go there and I have my cigar. I'm going tonight, matter of fact. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going out, I'm going after I pick her up, I'm going to Aloni. It is uh, <laughs> and you know it's funny. I should just be chilling there watching the games and stuff like everybody else. And I go in my little corner, I bring my laptop, I bring my music. And I bring my uh my notes and I'm sitting there editing projects like you still uh, you know, and I'm writing. I'm so I'm working the whole time and enjoy, but it's work that I enjoy. I, I love writing, I love editing oh. and stuff. So I'm I'm enjoying my time, but it's like that's set I don't have any distractions. I get to be there and just get my stuff done, enjoy it, and it's fun, it's great. So that's what I've been doing. With you, do you have a tribe out there or do, are you just kind of like because my I was talking to my father about this and I was when I interviewed him and I said, uh, do you actually have a tribe of men that you guys are on a group chat or something like that where something goes on, somebody mentions it and everybody kind of chimes in about their, what they think about it? Or are you kind of, you have a couple guys that you can call every once in a while, like, yo, I need to talk to you. Is it a tribe or is it more like, you know, I have a couple guys that I need to talk to every once in a while? Yeah, I would say it's more in the latter, a couple guys that I can talk to. I mean, I got friends like you, brothers like you, really, yeah. you know, that have been around my life that I trust anything I can, I can be, I can say this is between me and you, and it stays between me and you. I can say, hey, I need some advice on this. You know, I have a, a few friends like that. Um, but a tribe of men, I never really got into. I do have a few uncles who help out in the sis who've been through the thing. But, uh, you know, again, I was a single, single child, no dad in the household. So uh, this thing of evolving and becoming a man is, all, is, is ever, ever evolving for me. And it's like a shape, you know? Like, you know, I, when I met you, I didn't know how to freaking change oil in a car, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I didn't know how to change a tire. I didn't know how to do any of that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's it, it, it's a process that's developing and it's ever going. And what I'd like to do is when I'm out, you know, if, if I'm out and I meet other fathers, because we're always at somewhere where it's usually families, and I yeah. meet other fathers and I and I network that way, and then we kind of link up and just discuss, you know, things among men that help make us better fathers, brothers, you know, and husbands, you know. So that's kind of how how I uh, attack that subject. I love that. You know, like for me, with the, with the whole thing of like trying to find a child, I don't know if I'm going to do that, but I do like the idea of being able to reach out to your boys and like talk, you know what I mean? Like some real stuff, because this is, it's funny you said about ever evolving without, because you didn't have your father around, right? Yeah. Even with me having the amazing father that I had. I feel like I'm ever evolving because the problem, not a problem, but the thing that I always have in my mind is that, and I've read this too, because you know, I'm a, I like philosophy stuff. I read a lot of books and stuff oh. like that. One thing I, I, I read was that you really never become a father, like you not a father, you never really become a man until your father passes away or oh. you, you know what I mean? Because the thing is, and I don't, I'm not, I never want that to happen with my dad, you know, like, but what I'm saying is that you don't, you're not out here on your own until you don't have that. So we're all evolving. That's what I mean to say. Like we're all ever evolving. I don't care if you have a great a great father at home or not. We're not coming into our own until we have to. You know what yeah, I mean? Technically, you still really don't have to, even though you're 40 plus. You yeah. really don't have to. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. then at that point, okay, I get that. I get that. You no, know I mean, so we're all so we're all. It's not just that you ever evolve. We're all ever evolving. You know what I mean? I kind of separated myself early from my family. Uh, no offense to them, they're great. You know, but when I went to college, I left. I took off. And I was the only person who did that. Like, I was always, my family would look at me like, I'd come and visit for family and stuff, but, and it was no distance. It was just, I wanted to stand on my own two feet. I've always yeah. been like independent. And so, yeah. my father, I think that's the reason why my dad respects me a lot because I don't just kind of, everybody else in his life that loves my dad because he's like this amazing man. Um, they kind of just, when he says something, it's kind of law. Yeah. And I've always kind of, Pushed back a little bit. You know what I mean? And I, maybe it's because I'm the oldest son. Uh, Jareem does too now. Jareem, my younger brother, yeah. he definitely pushes back. But for a long time, it was always just me pushing back and having a smart mouth. And like, you mm. know, and I had to learn. I learned a lot of stuff he said was right, you know, but I had to work, go through it myself in order to evolve. Yeah. And so it's interesting that, yeah. that that has happened. I think that's important. Because yeah. your father wasn't in your life, and we're almost get, we're getting to the finish. Uh, because your father wasn't in your life, who were did you have father figures? Did you have like men that were around you that helped you out, that gave you guidance uh, when you were younger? Uncles. I, mean, I had some really good uncles, man. I had some really good uncles, you know. And and in our culture, we we tend our uncles tend to because you know our culture probably 
I don't know, 85, 90% of us don't have fathers, you know? Yes. So the uncle kind of steps in, and I had some really good uncles. But the the, 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 the thing is, the uncles, they hadn't, uh, they hadn't achieved certain things that I wanted to achieve in life. So their knowledge that they could give me was limited to what they had experienced. You know Ooh, what I'm saying? So that's that's powerful. Yeah, it's deep. And it's deep if you really think about it. It's not a knock at all. It's just like yeah. even somebody comes to me, I can only give you as much knowledge as where I am. But there's so many more people that have experienced way more things than me that can give you more knowledge than I can. You know, so it's yeah. not a knock, it's just reality. So my uh my mentorship started in the Navy. You know, I, st I had started meeting some some successful people outside of the Navy that were in the Navy. That mm -hmm. that that taught me how important a mentorship was. I didn't really meet any life changing mentors at that time, but it taught me that having a mentor was important. So after I got out of the Navy, I had met his name is Bob. You know, I can call him for anything. He was my boss. Um, he really taught me how to be a man and how important it was to. You know, I was a, a sports uh, bookie. At, at one of the companies out in Las Vegas, and mm -hmm. and you know we we take the bets, we move the lines, we take the bets, we yeah. you know we have to do all this. And the, and the key thing he told me was, hey, if you're gonna be a bookie, you can never cheat on your wife. And I was like, ha, 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 what are you talking about? He's like, because bookies always pay their bets and are honest. And if you're gonna sit in this room with me, you're gonna always be honest to your wife. And that I respect it, that. that like, I, I had never experienced that in my life, you know. Yeah, because yeah, I chuckled it off like, yeah, okay whatever. <laughs> and, and that changed my whole perspective. So he's been my mentor ever since I've been out of the Navy here in 2017. But it's the network of people that I go to. I go to, I, I tend to go to different people for different things. You know, so that, they have, you know, I respect that, bro. Like, I, so, so that, well, that was, and you answered my next question. I'll be like, yeah, somebody that was one of your mentors, give you a, a nugget that you're like, I can't, I held on to this so that I can like pass it down to my son type of thing. That's it, man. I mean, I, I, it changed my way. I'm not some promiscuous guy that was out there living wild and doing all these wild things, but it gave me a new perspective on I got to be better. I got son. I got to be better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Otherwise, I can't expect him to be better because he's only going to do what he sees. So, and, they're always trying, and they're always looking for their dad's approval. Yeah. yeah. And even and, and even kids, kids are watching you even when they're not watching. That's like, real. You, they might not be looking at you, but they're watching your actions. And it's yeah. important for them. It's important for you to be able to give them something to watch that's going to affect them in society. That's I love that. So it makes it easier to make the right decisions as a man in life when I live by that kind of code. So I try to live by that code. I'm not perfect, but it's you life. None of us are. None of us are. But we are. That's the, that's the one thing about. I think you know what is cool about our core group is we all have turned out to be really amazing people. I was just um, telling my wife that, man. I was just like, telling her. And we all have sons, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's wild. That's wild. That's wild. All of us did. Like, yeah. all of us. Boy, yeah. you, Dior, me. It's like, wow. And I love that we can, I can just send out the bad signal, like I said earlier, and I could just reach out to you guys, and you guys are just like, I got you. No problem. What you, what you need from me? That's true brotherhood, man. True, it's true brotherhood. brotherhood. I really, really yeah. miss you guys, man. Like, yeah. out here, it's, I got some people, but it's it's different than you guys. Like I miss playing bones all the time. I miss I really do miss playing bones and just talking shit. Just, that's what we did. <laughs> yeah, that's what we did. I do I do miss that. That uh, time my last question. Okay. That time, that time in life was the greatest time in life, man. We no, had life, responsibilities, but we didn't really have responsibilities. We had a core group of friendship. We went everywhere together. We yeah. moved together. You know, we fought together. We laughed. Yeah, we sure did. <laughs> We did everything together, you know what I'm saying? So those are just things that no matter what, you just can never take away those experiences, you know? I'll be forever yeah. thankful. Me too. I See, one of the things that I try, and this is the first time I'm doing it because I'm talking to you. Uh, one of the things is I don't try to live in the past. I do appreciate the past. I mean, home around my friends, I'll talk about it and stuff like that. But I don't bring it up a lot of times. But because you guys were so intricate to who the, who the person I am right now, like you guys were yeah. the people that we had real deep conversations about life and growing up and like trying to be better people. Uh, the fact that we're all doing our thing now is just, it's it's dope to me. So I had to reach out to you and I had to reach out to That's Boyce true. and I had to reach out to Dior and, uh, you know, touch base with you guys about your father because you guys are all following before me. I was, I wasn't planning. I was going to be that. The low man out, like, yo, y'all do y'all yeah. thing. We try to Yeah, no, nah, we, we need to get your ass. That's what we need to do. <laughs> I need somebody to put a hex on me, bro. 
but it's good. I'm happy about it now. But at first, I was like, yo, somebody, somebody put a hex on me. They said, you need to settle down. <laughs> That's funny. So, That's funny. Yeah, man. And, and it says something that you don't, you don't have to go outside your circle when you're looking for quality fathers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, don't have, you don't have to go to your friends at a, at a job or at a, you know, that you meet at this corner that you kick it with. You can go to your lifelong friends to yes. find information on being good fathers. And that's it. That's real. You know, true. You got to in tune, man. I have one last question for you. Okay. That I ask everybody. So the uh, first and last question is the question I ask everybody. Uh -oh. Do you have any piece of advice for a new father like me? What's <laughs> one thing that you could throw at me that you, it could be one or two, but what's one thing that you could throw at me and be like, yo, this is something important that you need to keep with you. Ah, oh, man. We've been dropping some nuggets throughout this one. Uh, so I gave you yeah. some already. Uh, let me see, man. I just think, just me knowing you, I just think that I could tell you you're a good enough man to be a successful father. You don't have to change. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, people need to reinvent themselves. People need to change. People need to go, you know, just just be you. You're good yeah. enough. You're, 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 you're foundation and character is good enough to be a good father, man. And that's 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 specifically for you. And and it's really for anybody. Just yourself is good enough. Have some faith in yourself. If you have the right foundation and you have, you know, you have good people around you, you're good enough to be a good father. But you gotta work at it. It's not easy. It's just hard it's work. True. It doesn't end for the rest of your life. You know, it just doesn't. So, for sure. Man. That is that is sage advice from the person that I used to go to for advice for a lot of shit. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I never went to you for women, though. I don't care what you say. I know you be talking that mess. I remember back in the day. Oh, oh bro. Sure. <laughs> I'm coming to you. Back. Matter of fact, get out of here, <laughs> bro. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you doing this for me. Oh, for real, man. man. Anytime, man. Hit me up if you want to do a part two, man. You know, oh, definitely. Let's go. But on top, on top of that, I want to do something. Uh, we're gonna talk about this offline a little bit. But I really want to just set up something for all of us to kind of get on a Zoom together and just chop it up. Cause it's, been, it's been too long, bro. You know what I mean? This is dope, man. This is dope, man. We need yeah. to do it for sure. For I appreciate sure. that. Hey, cheers to you, bro. Toast me real quick. And, man. Salute, my man. Salute, brother. Salute. Salute. Man. Salute. Cheers, man. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for, for uh, checking out this video. We've been drinking while we're having a good time. And uh, hope you guys took a couple nuggets from this. And until next time, guys, cheers. Cheers.